unicorns, those mythical creatures that no one has ever seen before and no one is really sure truly exist. Much like confidence. And if you throw in self-confidence, self-worth, self-belief, self-esteem, everyone's confused. Much like a South African in snow. Today I want to speak to you about confidence and want to offer you a way of looking at confidence and self-confidence in a different way so that you can use it to be more confident. The word confidence comes from the Latin word called fidere. It means to trust. So in essence, confidence means to trust something, to trust an outcome, the results of a report or a situation. Confidence is a very rational thing. It's to trust in something specific. On the other hand, self-confidence is to have trust in yourself. So I found it very helpful to split these two concepts and look at it separately. The first step is to look at confidence and look at it rationally, like a fact. So think about a skill that you would like to learn. For example, communicating assertively or presenting with confidence or leadership. The first step is to give yourself a rating on how good you are in this specific skill. So it's not an emotional rating, it's a real look at your ability. Do you do well in this or do you still have something to learn? Let me give you an example. Let's use presentation skills. If you have to rate your ability to present on a scale from 0 to 10, what would it be? I'll give you a moment to think about it. I'll take a sip of water while you think about it. If you give yourself an 8 out of 10, then that means rationally your confidence in your ability to present well is high. You have experience, you've done it a few times, and 8 out of 10 times your presentations go well. If you gave yourself a rating of 5 out of 10 or less, that means your ability is still growing. Sometimes you're doing well during your presentations and sometimes not so much. And that is fine because having 5 out of 10 in presentation skills means you're still building the skill. So the first step is to look at your ability separate from yourself. If it's 5 out of 10, fine, you still need to learn it, right? And the more you do it, the more you practice, the better you get at that specific skill. On the other hand, look at yourself, your self-confidence. What is your trust in yourself to learn a new skill? Do you believe you can learn presentation skills? Do you believe that you can learn how to present with impact and with confidence? If the answer is yes, then your self-confidence is high. And it's absolutely fine if your confidence in your ability is low while you build that up and your self-confidence is high because you know you can learn it. And let me tell you one thing. Our aim and goal is not to play music and write music like Beethoven or Mozart did or run as fast as Usain Bolt. We can learn new skills. Leadership, assertive communication, presentation skills are all learnable. Every one of us can learn it. So have a very strong self-confidence in yourself that you can learn a new skill. If you need some encouragement, think about the skills that you've learned in the past two years, three years. Or is there anything that you couldn't do well that you are doing well right now? I'm sure you can find examples. So there you go. Split off confidence versus self-confidence and look at these two aspects separately. Confidence in your ability, doing it over and over and over and practicing will help you to grow your ability in it and your confidence in your ability will grow. On the other hand, self-confidence, your belief and your trust in yourself. Remember, you've learned skills before. You do not have the same skill set you had when you started your career, brand new out of university or school. So we can learn things. Confidence and self-confidence. You can be proud. Go for it. All the best. Bye for now.